Yeah. Hi. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Sadie Young, the owner here at Spectra Art Space, and we are about to get started with our third episode of Spectra in Your Studio. Um, every Friday at 6 p.m., we're going to go live right here and interview different artists and creatives, and I'll be asking them about what they're working on, if they have some advice for all of us, and more. And today, I'm really excited about our guest. She is an artist, creative, mother, disabilities advocate, Denver native, and the community engagement coordinator and marketing associate at Meow Wolf Denver. Most recently, she started Colorado's first artist relief fund to support artists and performers who were financially impacted by all of the cancellations due to the pandemic. And she's here, so I'm going to pop her in and let her introduce herself. She's on her way. Oh, I can hear her. I can see her. Yay. Hi. Hi. Oh, How I, are you? I'm good. I'm realizing I need a selfie stick in order to do this interview. Otherwise, it's just going to be my big fat face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be great. Okay. We can both have our big faces on there. Okay, cool. It'll I'll be perfect. Prop yeah. it up. We'll prop it up. In it together. Yeah. yeah. Cool. How are you? Good. Good. Um, can you introduce yourself real quick to everyone? I gave you an intro, but I didn't say like your full name and stuff. So yeah. do you want to tell everyone? Hi, I'm Mariah Weiss. And I'm a Denver native. You said you said it all. Bio sent you the big old mm -hmm. bio. Yeah. There's a little addendum to that bio that happened about mm -hmm. six hours ago. But uh, for now, yeah, that's who I am. Cool. How are you and your family holding up sheltering in place? Because you have a pretty big family, right? Well, I have three kids. I'm a widow. And my oldest is 28. She lives by her, she lives with her partner, so she's not living here. And then I have my two teenagers. Oh. I keep saying I'm paused because I'm not on the app. I'm on the app. I'm on the app. Um, yeah, I can see you and hear okay, you. Good. So that's good. Good, good, good. So yeah, just, uh, yeah. It's, it's the three of us at the house right now. And we're doing good. We're, we're doing um, better than some not as good as others but yeah we're doing good you, the teenagers good. Are, are over it oh yeah yeah are they doing the online school and stuff they are and we go to jeffco open which is a democratic school it's a child-led school so it's pretty free-flowing and up until their dad had passed away my kids did not go to school so we were oh. the term is radical unschoolers we were uh we bucked the curve. We, I, I have issues with uh, public education and compulsory education, but we found this really great school. And so it's been pretty easy. They're used to just kind of doing things on their own and they're both artists. So they just spend the day Yay. drawing and animating and doing cool stuff. That's so amazing. Um, so actually I am going to switch my questions around a, a little bit. Um, what have you guys been working on? And do you want to show us around your studio space? Yeah. Um, so I don't have a studio. <laughs> I or have, your office where I you work have, at home. Um, I have my bedroom is really where I keep all my stuff. My kids, they create dozens of times a day. And so I give them the art space and it's a disaster. So all of my creative space are in my bedroom. And so I'm happy to show that to you if you want. Yeah, you wanna show us where you sure. create? So this is my art studio, this tiny little area right here. But um, it's really- I And you have lots of bed. art, of course. Oh my gosh. So I, I would know not, you have quite the um, collection. Yeah, oh, you might recognize who this is. This is Tanya Katz, yeah. She, oh yay, we love her. Yeah, um, I'm not, I would not consider myself a full-time artist. I would consider myself a full-time art advocate. And yes, yes. Full-time in the art like sphere. Oh yeah, right? absolutely. Kind of, yeah. So these are, I put some of my very favorite pieces. This is a John Van Horn piece um, in my wow, bedroom. I love that. And there's my dog. He actually helps me create but <laughs> um, and I have some Jen Hurling right here. Jen Starling, I believe oh, is wow. her name. And I can, I mean, literally, we could just do the entire interview and it would be a tour of 
my art your collection. Your amazing collection. Yes. Oh, yeah. That one's hard to see because of the... Oh, there we got it. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And... You can really tell that it's like your collection. Oh, when yeah. you're like going through all of this. It's kind of amazing. This is my living room now. So this... I mean, I have little trinkets and mm -hmm. um, sculptures from every artist that I've probably ever personally met. I've found a way to, this is my one piece that I have up in my house. So this is my art right here. But everything oh, else. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's from the catacombs in Paris. So it's a watercolor, digital watercolor of the catacombs in Paris. But I try to find a way to collect art from every single person I ever meet. Um, yeah, even if it's something little, right? That's what yeah. kind of people don't realize is you can get like, like a little sticker or my pin or something, you know, that's what I do too, kind of. So I love that. Yeah, I mean, some some of these were given to me were made just for me. So I'm super excited about yeah. those. But these were hey. postcards that I got and just had them framed because at the time I did not have any more cash. I think I'd spent all my art money for the month. And uh, so I just bought her postcards and had them framed. So I do my that's very perfect, best. That's perfect though. Yeah. 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 Most of the art that's in my, this wall that you can see here, cause mm -hmm. I have tons too. Cause you know, I work with so many too, but yeah. most of this stuff was gifted to me yeah. for the most part, I think. But when you advocate for them, you know, they, they respect that too. But I also buy art because we love them, don't we? <laughs> we do. And um, I don't know how much art I'm going to be able to buy in the near future. Um, right. As of about six hours ago, I was laid off from Meow Wolf. So that's the addendum to the bio. But mm -hmm. I will continue to support them any other way I possibly can. Yeah, yeah. Which is nice. And you still have a lot of experience that I feel like um, people who are watching will be able to um, really enjoy and get something out of too, especially since you are such an advocate for arts and all of that. Um, so let's see. So just the little Spectra question I always ask everyone. Um, so you've attended several events at Spectra Art Space. What yes. was the first one you came to and how, like, how was it? What'd you think? I think the first one I came to was a play pandemic. Oh, pandemic collective. Is that no way? That was your first one. Yeah. I think so that cool. might be my first one. I mean, I think I had been there several times, but I think that was my first event and it was the Japanese horror performance. Yeah. I feel really bad that I don't remember the name, but I no, may have had a couple pandemic cocktails. collective. There we go. There we go. <laughs> that was so cool. Yeah, the Colorado Sake Company, they donated sake to them, oh. I think. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that was that was a cool event. What a cool like way to experience Spectra for the first time because it's not we've not had a play since then. I'd love to do that more, but that's cool. Yeah. I like hearing that. It was fun. Um Yeah. All right. So, how long have you been working in the arts and doing what you do? I think I was a 26, so 20, 25 maybe? I was 25, 25 or 26 and I will be 47 this summer. So that is when wow. I, I mean, I worked at a hair salon before that and I managed several portrait studios before that, but mm -hmm. I would not consider those fine art. They are definitely, a, the portrait studios, I mean, photography absolutely is fine art, and I'm a photographer. But um, I think those were more just in the creative realm. But I got a job mm -hmm. at, um, at the time, it was Read Photo Imaging. And I, I got that I job. that in, name. Yeah, they are the largest photo um, lab in the state of Colorado. They switched to becoming a fine art portrait studio or no fine art photography studio good lord don't drink before you get on live <laughs> interviews um yeah it's so, all right it's all right fine art reproductive studio good gracious um oh okay and, and they're they're suffering right now too because of COVID-19 several of my friends have been laid mm -hmm. off from there as well um yeah but yeah that was my first yeah it's hard 
26. I was, I was 26 years old when I met my first artist who sold something that was more than like a thousand dollars. And it was the craziest thing ever. Ah, oh, that's so cool. That's gonna be a good feeling. Yeah. Um, what got you started? Did you, is it something like you always knew that this was like the, like a world that you wanted to be a part of? Or was it like there, was there like a moment or a job? Um, so when I was 12, my dad gave me a camera. I think I was just irritating him. Mm. Um, and he gave me <laughs> his Canon. It was a DSLR. And he's like, here's some film. Go outside. Leave me alone. Um, we I went outside for an hour or so, came back in. We processed the film. And apparently I had immaculate depth of field right off the right off the bat and he's like I think you you're on to something here and so he fed my photography habit until I was 15 and a half when I got my first job at CPI photo finishing in the Westminster Mall and so okay I could process my film for free and I could get a discount on film and I took pictures of anything and everything I took selfies in the mirror like, it was crazy. I was doing all this stuff. Um, and, but I didn't know what I was doing. I was 15 and a half. And so I took some photography right. classes. And I, I got to mentor with some really amazing photographers that my dad knew. And um, my next job was photographer at Glamour Shots. Oh, my God. It was Ooh. the craziest thing ever. Did you dress people up and everything? Yeah. Yeah, silver. I, I, long kind of, I can see gloves. you doing that it was and so like enjoying fun. it. Yeah, it yeah, was, it was a awesome. blast. Um, yeah, you always have like the best like outfits and hair and makeup and stuff. Like I could see you doing that. That's fun. Thank you. My kids were so excited. Yeah. They're like, "You don't have to put on pants, mom. You can just do like half an <laughs> outfit." I do. Have, I have on pants, but um, yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> um, we've all been in our pajamas for the last couple of weeks, but. Um, yeah. So yeah. I, mean, I wear lots of leggings and stuff anyways. Yeah. So it just kind of works out. I had started in on the tracksuit craze about two months ago. <laughs> so I had it. I, I think maybe I serendipitously, I knew I needed to, to calm down, but um, <laughs> just crazy jobs after that portrait studio manager for little photos, kitty candids on and on and on. And, and all the while crazy punk rocker, new waver couldn't, I don't really feel like I have an artistic bone in my body because I don't draw, I don't sing, I don't play an instrument. And so to call myself an artist has always been really hard. But right. the more I hung out with creative people, the more I understood that we're all creative. And if I yes. can take, a t take time and take a moment each day to make something out of nothing, then yeah, that absolutely makes me an artist. Yeah. And so. I can't agree with you more. Like, I do think that everyone has like a creative um, piece in inside of them. Sometimes it's just like a little stronger than others. And some people decide to like nurture that. But like when I teach my classes and stuff and people are like, oh, I'm not an artist. I can't even draw a stick figure. You know, like that's that's such a common thing to say. But yeah. there's so many kinds of art, even words and like, oh, yeah, you know. I tell my, my hairdresser, well, she, she paints and stuff too, but I always tell her, like, I feel like she's an artist when she does her, like hair because she gets oh. creative and I can like see that coming out. That and, absolutely You know, like stuff like that. Like art. people don't yeah. realize that that's like part of it. And once you get them to just like do it and taste it, they're like, oh, that felt good. I actually yeah. made something from nothing and that made me feel good, you know? Yeah. So hairdressers really cool. are some of the first, when I was 21, I got a job at a hair salon. And um, they're some of the, the craziest artists. They do things mm -hmm. on a cellular level. They create art on a cellular level. So that, yeah, hairdressers are absolutely yeah. artists. So, Yes, of and course. I live with two phenomenal artists. So when they come and show me a little sketch that they did, I'm like, oh, yeah, pff, I suck. <laughs> it's not even <laughs> funny. Um, at maybe at that, maybe it at is. that one thing. Yes, right? and they try to remind me. They're like, "You, you do lots of other things, mom. You're fine." So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you do, and you have done so many things, and you definitely don't look like you're what you say, forty-seven. Don't look it, not so at all. Botox. I had no idea. 
<laughs> Although it's gonna, we're all stuck here. Hit it, girl. We're stuck here, so my forehead's gonna start moving at some point. <laughs> I've already got the gray yeah, my, hair coming in. I'm like, my, damn it! My kitchen manicure is uh, Ooh, not looking great anymore. I, yeah, I gotta, I, I gotta get back to the kitchen salon. <laughs> yeah, I took my nails off myself because um, I had a part-time job. I had another job, and I worked at Tootsie's Nail Shop, and. I sh I showed I posted a picture of my nails off and every single one of them texted me they're like what did you do <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry I'm sorry so yeah my hairdresser put up a meme and she said like do me a favor and just wait for me <laughs> I'm waiting something. I'm waiting do I've your hairdresser a favor hair. and wait for them or something yeah yeah I I'm love waiting. it I think that's so funny I'm glad that my partner um, loves me no matter what color my hair is because he loved me when it was pink. I hope he loves me yeah. when it's gray. <laughs> I love your pink hair. I, um, oh yeah, I've had gray hair um, since I was like 25. It's definitely gotten a lot more, like I've got a lot more now since like I started the gallery three years ago. Like that's it stress. definitely has yeah, come in a lot stronger. <laughs> stress for sure. But yeah. Um, okay. So your story is really great. And I think that it kind of like proves that you just like, you start somewhere and sometimes you don't even realize that you're starting like, or yeah. that you already started. But the next question that I had for you was, um, for somebody who wants to get involved in the arts, like in any capacity, um, but doesn't know where to start, what, what would you tell them? What advice would you give them? Oh my gosh. The hardest thing for a lot of artists, myself included, is showing people your art. Um, mm -hmm. I think I've only been in three shows my whole life, and one of them I curated and just put myself in it just in case nobody else wanted to show up. Um, but that's what I've been advocating for with artists for years, is to get that artwork out from underneath their bed and and look at it, show people, um, mm -hmm. really just appreciate that what you do is art and that somebody's going to want to see it. And the world is a better place for yeah. artists. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. That's like a huge reason why Spectra is kind of the way that it is is to bring those people out. I love that. I think that's really cool. And that show that you're talking about, that was Spun Sugar, right? It was Spun Sugar, is yeah. Is that what it was called? Yep. Oh, cool, yeah. That looked like it was so much fun. And you I definitely, mean, yeah. it, I could tell you have like a knack for curating too. That was really cool to see. Yeah, it was a really fun show. I have been throwing events for as long as I can remember. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to have an event where I could, the the, the impetus for that was my friends opened a coffee shop and I wanted people to know where the coffee shop was. And so I'm like, we're going to do an art show and we're going to get people in here. And I collected a fee for submissions and the submission fee actually went to the coffee shop to pay for a hanging system. It was a custom hanging system so that they can continue to have art shows so that they could continue to have another source of revenue. And it was a really fun event, like, and everyone yeah. sold something. It was great. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I love that. That's yeah. such a cool thing. I feel like we have a lot in common, oh. which is crazy. Like, the more I hear your stories, I'm like, oh, oh. Like, it wasn't that long ago I did, before I had the gallery, I helped, like, a taco shop by throwing, like, a different art show there every month. And I just, like, wanted to curate. And I did the same thing for it. The Armory closed, sadly. But it was like a bar. I did art shows there. But yeah, same kind of concept. You want to like bring people there, but then you also get this opportunity to support artists. And I think, I think that's just really incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it looked like it was just so fun. It was, was a so lot sad. of fun. I was working. I had to be at the gallery, so I couldn't come. <laughs> a lot of people were working. But yeah, I think the, uh, yeah. the highlight of the evening, other than the art, was my partner, brought his cotton candy machine and there was just cotton candy floating in the air. Oh, sorry. Trying to prop the phone so that my arm will stop hurting. Um, but yeah, he brought oh, his cotton yeah. candy machine and there was cotton candy flowing in the air and it was so much fun. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. We want, I, I want to see more of that from you. I think it, 
that sounds like something that you maybe enjoyed. I don't know. I don't know. It sounds was fun. fun. It was fun. <laughs> um, okay. I know you probably have a really good answer for this one. Um, what to you makes Denver such a special place for creatives? Oh my gosh. I, that one, I, I, I read this, I knew this question was coming. I knew this question was coming. <laughs> it's really hard because I have such a soft spot for Denver. And it's funny because as a teenager, I hated this town. There was nobody <laughs> here. It was just people from Denver. And I was like, oh, um, and anytime somebody came from somewhere else, we're like, oh my God, where are you from? You're from <laughs> New York or New Jersey. Oh my God, that's amazing. What's it like over there? <laughs> Um, and now if you could get more than three Denver natives in a room at a time, it's like a unicorn fest. It's like, whoa. Right. Um, we're both unicorns. I, I was born in Denver. Oh, yay. Mm -hmm. I just, I was telling everyone that I was born at DG, Denver General. Just found out I was not. Found my adopted oh. birth certificate. Super sad. St. Luke's. It's oh, fine. No. It's so, it's sort of close. I was St. Joseph's. So, Yeah. Still Denver, but yeah. it's good. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Denver now, I didn't really start appreciating it until I came back. I left for nine years. I worked. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, I went to Portland for nine years with my um, late husband. He was an animation director for Leica Studios. So mm -hmm. he was working on Coraline and Paranorman and a bunch of really cool stuff. And um, he was doing the 2D commercial part of Leica Studios. Not that it matters, but uh, Honey Bee was pretty fun. The Cheerios Honey Bee, he did that. And my daughter <laughs> got to be in the Ego Waffles commercial. But yeah, so we went and I came back. And when I came back, I was like, oh my God, this is my place. This is where my people are. This is where my mm -hmm. village is. The, it just felt like home. And so I've, I hear that continuously from transplants that when they got here, they knew they were home. There's just something magical hmm. about Colorado and about Denver in particular. It's, it's sad with the gentrification, like, oh my God, it's so sad. Yeah, and all that's of kind my, of a bummer. All of my favorite spaces, I'm like, what? My best friend grew up, lived in the North side and that's where I, like, that's what I knew. That's 44th and mm -hmm. Wyandotte, like La Raza Park, like that was. That's where I was. Yeah. She that was, was like my she, first house Her dad little. owned Arts Auto Body over on the other side. So, yeah. I mean, it, okay. they lived at 44th and Zuna, I believe, like right off on 44th and wind up. But, yeah, now it's the Highland. Like, I don't know. It, it just blows. I don't even know what it is. But, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I lived there before it was the Highland. It was not like that. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And I was the white girl. But it's fine. Me too. <laughs> my best friend loved me. She was like, it's fine. You're going to be here. Um, and this was my, my town and my city and my people. And, um, even as a child, as a teenager, there was graffiti and there was tagging and there was, I mean, there was public art before it was even called public art and, mm -hmm. um, the low riders and the, all, all of those things are creative and all of those things are artistic yeah. and the Sunday cruises up and down federal, like we lived for that. And I grew up, um, a little further North than she did. And there was just always something creative to do. There was, there was all ages clubs, which I'm, I, I'm too old now to go to all ages clubs, but I wish there were all ages spaces for kids. Like that was where mm -hmm. I found my creativity was in these all ages clubs in the eighties and early nineties with the music and the punk rock music and the way new wave music. And that's where I found my friends and learned to do my crazy makeup and dress in this weird way. And that's, I don't know if you could get that anywhere else because a friend of mine, Dan Landis, said once I was at a, a talk and he was one of the speakers and he said, we're not New York City. We're not L.A. We're the fucking Wild West. And that's <laughs> Denver. We're the fucking Wild West. Nothing. We're not any of those things. And that's why I love it. Yeah. Creative space. Denver is Denver. Denver yeah. is Denver. It's, you have to pass through here. That's we used to be just the pass through. Mm -hmm. We're not anymore. Now we're the destination. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's a blessing and like this weird and in like a weird way it occurs. It's like, it's like trying to like, like I'm very excited about it, but it does, it is like a bummer. Like I got pushed out of living in Denver yeah. now, but my space is still there. Like we're still there. So my intention is to stay. <laughs> I know. fought so hard when I bought my house and I, and I bought my very first house two years ago 
And I, I'm congratulations. Thank That's a big you. deal. Yeah, it, it is a huge deal. A little worried about paying my mortgage now without a job, but we're going to get through mm -hmm. it. But I made sure mm -hmm. that I was on the Denver line. So I have a Denver address. I have a 303 phone number. Like it's ridiculous. Good. Denver natives, awesome. we are super possessive of those things. So, right. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's cool. So I am going to move to this one because I feel like this could be really helpful for people. Um, okay. Since you have um, experience with marketing in the mm -hmm. arts, um, what advice do you have for artists and small creative businesses who are trying to like build their own audience or just from your experience in those roles? Like, do you just have some good things that could help some of us or some artists who are watching? My advice three weeks ago would have been completely different than it is today. Um, but right now we need to, artists need to get on social media. I know there's so many mm -hmm. that are like, not going to happen. Um, sorry, now's the time. You got to get on social media. Mm -hmm. You got to get an online platform. And you've got to get your artwork out there. Everything you need to know, you can find on the internet. How mm -hmm. do I charge for my art? What percentage do I charge for my time? How do I this? How do I that? All of those things are answered. There's someone smarter and wiser that has put that information on the internet for you. And literally Google is your best friend. You have to be careful. You need to talk to other artists, professional artists, gallery owners. You need to talk to them. But I mean, the advice, I mean, I can't really even give the, the straightforward advice anymore because what's going to happen in the next month and how business mm -hmm. will conduct itself is going to be so different. But the it one is. thing that has, has stayed is online, an online presence. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Get a YouTube channel. Everybody's doing the Facebook Live, Instagram Lives. Show people your art. Don't worry about being... You know, don't worry about being, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of it. Again, don't drink before an interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, but don't worry about looking like you are um, you're self promoting because you are. You are self promoting. Mm -hmm. you, you, um, you, love, you need to love yourself, love your art, love yourself enough to put yourself out there, show your art, That's join really as advice. many groups as you can join, um, online groups. That's really good advice too. And don't, you know, don't yeah. be the, 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 the asshole that like spams everybody with everything, but pay mm -hmm. attention, find someone that you like their flow and you like their energy and message them and be like, Hey, I'm new to this. Do you, mm -hmm. can you, can you give me some pointers? I would say in the past, you know, Hey, invite someone to coffee. Ask them if you can pay right. them for, for, you know, 50 bucks for an hour. It's a lot of money. But if you can get a ton of information in an hour and, you know, it might, it's worth it. It's worth the money. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, there's so many online webinars right now and online classes. And the fact that we're all quarantined will, you know, it lends itself to taking advantage of all of the free opportunities that are out there. There's free mm -hmm. classes, free webinars, free art classes, you know, just look up all of those things and get yourself into the digital world. There is no going back from the digital world. We, that is where it's at right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I feel like all of that is, is so important. And I think it's so true. Like this one thing that you said is really sticking out to me. Like there is somebody who did something that you're trying to learn that is smarter than you in that subject at least yep. that has done the research and spent their life and time on it. So look it up and take advantage of that. Yeah. And um, I also think it's really important. Like um, another thing that you said that I thought was really great too, was um, just like asking somebody or reaching out to people and asking, cause I, um, I've always kind of like had it in my mind and I didn't realize it was there until people started asking me for advice, but it's like, you have to ask because the, the worst thing that's going to happen if you don't is nothing's going to change. Yeah. But the worst thing that's going to happen if you ask is they say no. Yeah. And then it's fine. Yeah. Nobody just dies from the word no. That's always been yeah. my big, the biggest fear 
and, and within with fear comes what what are you what are we most afraid of on a primal level we're afraid of death like yeah. that's what we're afraid of and so when you ask a question and the answer is no, you're not going to, you know, it's that, that word is not going to kill you. It's just like, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. Thanks for whatever. Um, a little yeah. morbid in the times that we're in, but yeah, that's, that's how I gauge things. Like, is it going to kill me? And if it's not, then I just try to speak my truth. Mm -hmm. Ask the yeah. questions. It's so hard, but take it from the old lady four decades right? and counting it's so with much lots better. of experience yeah just in ask. denver just specifically ask. too yeah um yeah that's amazing so something i pulled this question just from reading your bio and i thought like oh this is, i feel like is a question that a lot of people have and i feel like you already touched on it um so sorry if this is kind of repetitive but um some people and artists struggle to figure out how to price their time and their artwork. And I know in that bigger bio, which I'm going to post when I post the recording of this video on YouTube and on IGTV, I'm going to put your full bio in there. Okay. But um, you said that you fight, you fought for artists to get paid what they're worth and get paid what their time is worth. So I was wondering um, for artists who struggle with that or struggle with how to price their time and their artwork, what advice do you have? And I know you already touched on it. A little no, bit. no, it's okay. The best advice I can give any artist, and I have so many of you, I could count them on my hands right now. I could call you out. Mm -hmm. Stop giving your art away for free. I know it's mm. so hard. It's like, oh, wow, they love you. And they're like, oh, I want you to have this. And it's like, no, can I pay you at least like, what was your materials cost? And they're just like, mm. I don't know. So stop giving your art away for free keep track of the money you spend to make the art. I know Ooh, that's really good advice. I, know. I don't even take that all the time. <laughs> Artists just need to art. They like, it's like they need to breathe. They just, it, it needs to happen. Yes. And so you don't think about the simple things and it's like, mm -hmm. write it down. $20 on a canvas, $14 on a bottle of this, $15 on this, $75 on brushes. Like, write it down so that mm -hmm. you know what you are spending just to make your art. Mm -hmm. And then it, it goes into, there's like a lot of different calculations, like how long have you been making art and what's mm -hmm. your level of experience and how can right. you charge by the hour? But the one thing, and that, that all comes with experience. Right. You find I something think that similar. That is a good start though. Yeah. Like that right just down. as a base. Like yeah. yeah, just figure out how much you're spending to make it. I mean, I think that that's like um probably one of the most like you know, like that seems so obvious, but I don't even take that advice all the time, yeah. but it's so true. Like I feel like that's an amazing place to start and I've never thought about that before. That's a really good It can be daunting. <laughs> <laughs> yes you, especially like, when you just go buy stuff all the time. yes i i did so i did a piece for the costa bonita art show and oh, I, I saw that too. i had this idea and i don't have a kiln not a sculptress and and what i was wanting to sculpt w would not have been that difficult but in the end i asked an amazing sculptor my one of my very dear friends kelly clements um if she would collaborate with me, told her my idea. We went over the sketches. She sculpted it. She did the cast. So it was this really beautiful collaborative effort of a dildo shaped like Casa Bonita. <laughs> and it was amazing. And I was like, we're not going to sell it because I spent so much money on all the materials and the shipping. Right. And the, I was like, it's not even worth it. I'm not going to sell mm -hmm. it. No one's going to want to buy it for it. Even just the amount of money I spent to make it. Mm -hmm. um, in the end, I did put a price on it and someone bought it right away. It was amazing. It's the funniest. Good for you. It's so funny. It's, but that's yeah. the thing is I don't normally put my art out there. Mm -hmm. But luckily, the very few times that I have, I've always sold it. And so I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm at, a, I'm at a plus plus. I'm done. I'm done. I'm good. I'm going to tap out now. I've, everything I've ever made is sold. I'm done. But then I end up making something else. Um, but it's usually just on a whim. So, but yeah, take it, take note of what it costs you to at least make the art. And then mm -hmm. when you, you know, you have to put in your time to create the art and promote the art and set up the website. I mean, all of those things factor in, what are you mm -hmm. worth? What is your, what is your time worth? And it, it grows exponentially. The more you sell, the more, 
the more exposure you get, you know, your time becomes mm -hmm. more valuable. You've got these amazing actors who then show you their ability to be a painter and all of a sudden their paintings are $50,000. And it's like, no, 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 no. You got to start back. At you have to start beginning. somewhere. But yeah. you know, the world's not fair. So whatever. Right. So, right. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, no, I feel like that was all really amazing. So you, so this next one, um, and where I was kind of going with this is like, you seem like you have like a lot of fun and you go and you like do stuff and you look like an artist, you know, like when you have your pink hair and your fun haircuts and yeah. your amazing makeup. So you have like this really fun, like presence of an artist, but also as like a working professional with like the stuff that you do and you do get stuff done. We've seen that. Um, and I feel like for a lot of creatives and artists, it can be really hard for them to find that balance of like, I am an artist. This is how I'm, gonna be but then also being professional um how how did how did you like figure out that balance or what is there like something that you could um like an advice you could give just as far as like maintaining a professional reputation for creatives well just off the tip of my tongue the best advice I can give is to be mm -hmm. careful Everything you do online, everything you say online reflects your character. So even if you think that it's your mm. personal account, so don't, relevant, don't be a, yeah. like seriously, yeah. don't, don't say horrible things. Um, but my whole life, I always tried to get my outsides to match my insides. And because I had to have mm. these professional jobs, I couldn't do the wild and crazy things, but I always pushed the envelope. So I was like, no, you can't have crazy hair color. All right, fine. I'll have black hair color. Don't be a jerk. Black is, black is, a, is a natural color. You can't tell me it's not. So I could get away with having jet mm -hmm. black hair. Um, I would always do crazy business attire. Still business attire, but it had a little bit of a flair. It wasn't until three and a mm -hmm. half years ago when I got hired originally with Meow Wolf and I saw that the founders, they were personifying what they were doing. And they had crazy blue hair and green hair and didn't wear suits and ties and nobody shook hands and they hired me and I was like, really get paid to be myself. I'm going to be myself. And so I, that's when I dyed my hair pink and just lost all the professional clothes. Um, guess I'm going back because I, I got to go get another <laughs> job now. But luckily I, the pink hair has been gone for a little while. So well, and I feel like being professional doesn't necessarily mean that you have to, I think if you like act and your actions are professional, you can look however you want. Well, right? more so, so they now didn't than hire... ever. More so now yeah. than ever. Like you didn't get those jobs and have done and like do the things that you do because of the way that you dressed. I feel like it was more because of like how you approach situations or um, made them know, like, regardless of anything, I am professional. Um, well, that would be and wonderful I think, in a perfect world, but we still live in a world that's, right. that's white supremacist, value-based, a patriarchy that still, you know, puts women second. And um, I definitely knew my white privilege even going into all of those jobs. If I had been a woman of color and tried to have natural hair, who knows if I would have even gotten the interview. Like there's, unfortunately, perception and appearance do make up for a large part of it. percentage. Yeah, it really is. It, and it's changing for sure. I love the, tattoo, mm -hmm. the campaigns for tattoos and the, like the neurosurgeon comes out and he's all covered in tattoos and then he puts on his like surgeon's, you know, his, his coat and, you know, it, it's definitely changing. And people are becoming more open-minded and not everyone with a tattoo is a devil worshiping motorcycle riding cokehead, whatever people think they are. But no, you know, there's still, um, luckily in the creative field, you, you get to push the envelope a little bit. And that's where I've always worked is mm -hmm. in the creative field. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that like, no matter what, you, like, I mean, for me, I don't care what my artist 
look like or my people look like like I love it all like everything is crazy but I will I will start to think that people are not maybe professional if they're like miss deadlines or show up to meetings super high like yeah I mean it's yeah you still have to be an adult you have to you have to be an adult yeah it's hard yeah artists are it's like hoarding cats like some of them have never sent Mm -hmm. an email like it's just you gotta it's time we all we're all in the new digital age now Mm -hmm. we have to uh it's time to to pull it together yeah absolutely all right so let's see is this the one being that you're a big advocate for the arts what can people who are watching and listening now do to support artists performers and creatives at this time like with and maybe even without money so one of the really cool things about where we're at right now is that um artists of all disciplines um and all abilities can be more creative they're in their space and they can use what they have to be creative and so i um, put your art online um People with, from the disability community have been fighting to work at home for years. And everyone's like, mm. yo, you can't work at home. Well, guess what? It's possible. Wow. We can all work at home. We can all create at home. So buy art. Buy art from your artists, people with disabilities. Buy art from um, mm. artists of color. Buy, you know, mm. just, again, like you said earlier, it can be just a little piece. $5 mm-hmm. is, is not a huge deal. Um, when you're on and you see that your friends, your artist friends are doing something online, share mm-hmm. that. Call your friends, mm-hmm. text your friends, like, hey, tune into this. Let's support this person. So you don't mm-hmm. necessarily need to spend money to do that. You can, you know, you can be a voice and you can get people to participate. Um, if you want to spend money, I started that, that first week of March 10th, 11th, 12th. I started yeah. um, Denver's very first artist relief fund. It was actually Colorado's first um, relief fund. It's called the Denver Metro Area Artist Relief Fund. And it mm-hmm. is a fund that was set up with the intention to support artists and performers who had lost gigs due to the cancellations because of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. We have supported over 60 artists. We've raised wow, over 60? 60 artists. Yay each getting a cap like we 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 had to cap it at three hundred dollars so anywhere from a hundred to three hundred dollars and we raised over twelve thousand dollars so if you want to give five dollars or share that gofundme it's actually we actually made a web page so it's www.denverartistrelief.org and it takes you right to the gofundme it was not intended to supplement lost income it was intended to get money in the hands right. of artists and performers who need to go get a prescription, who, who've gone mm. to the food distribution sites and they're, they have everything except for a certain thread that you have to have because you're celiac or something. Like it was, it was just intended to, to meet a, an immediate need. And I see all these other funds that are at $150,000, $200,000, um, I'm volunteering with an organization that's making PPE for frontline workers called Make for COVID. We've raised over mm-hmm. half a million dollars or close to half a million dollars. And as we should, the PPE, the, the health workers need that. Wow. They need yeah. those PPE equipment. Yeah. But, but artists need that too. So it's like, where's, where are they getting all this money? I need some people to donate mm-hmm. to our fund. But this artist relief fund is... Um, So it's myself and five of my really great friends um, from all disciplines of art. Um, We have three people of color, two LGBTQ folks, some women, like it's all over the space. We wanted to make sure we had a really diverse group of people that looked at each one of these applications and we gave Mm. um, money based on the point system. So donate when you can, $5 helps share when you can't donate. Mm -hmm advocate for your creative friends, you know, go to their events, go to their online happy hours, go to their online magic shows. Mm -hmm. Um, Just find ways that you can support them. Offer, I have the really great resource list 
that I put out that I can either send you and you can put it on the link. Yeah. It's got food resources, yeah. general resources, resources for families, professionals, small businesses. Just find mm -hmm. a way to support your your artists and your performers because I mean that's ultimately the people that donated to the fund were artists and performers. Like we we haven't right. had huge we have not had a huge philanthropists come and donate a ton of money these are artists right. taking care of artists and so that's mm -hmm. that's where it's at yeah well yeah so for if you're listening to this as a recording or now when I do post this on our YouTube and the Instagram and stuff I will make sure that everything that Mariah is talking about right now um gets a link and thank you, Andrew, for dropping the link. I just for saw your that. Your guys' relief fund in there, Yay. too. So if you guys want to, before I get to do that, there it is again in case you forgot. Um, but I'll link that um, that resource sheet that you put together. It is really helpful. Um, I referenced it a couple times. So it was very nice. So thanks for that. Um, and the relief fund in the PPE. Personal protective equipment. Group that you're, yeah. Or that one too we'll link everything that yeah. she's talked about yeah make for um, COVID is amazing if you are an artist that's working and just looking for a way to volunteer go to make for the number four covid.co you can be a maker a designer a driver you can volunteer in a million different ways it's been up for 18 days we've shipped over 6,500 pieces of equipment medical equipment there's over a wow. hundred organizations and 1600 volunteers. And this is an organization that started 19 days ago. I joined at day 15 or 16 as one of the core team members. And mm -hmm. that's, they've been able to do this in, in three weeks. Like it's insane. Like they're just go, 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 going. It's amazing. The, the creative community that's coming together. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah. We'll make sure. And Andrew, dropped a link there too for that one if you guys are interested i have a great but, partner yeah he is great yeah um we'll make sure that all that stuff is there for everyone for later too so just on that last thing and if anybody who's watching right now has a specific question go ahead and answer it now i know that there is like after doing this enough that there is a lag time so if you have a specific question you want to ask her drop it now because we have about 13 minutes till the live will go, like, just kick us off. So I want to make sure we say goodbye before that happens. But the last thing that I had was on that note of, like, supporting people. Is there anybody that you want us to know about that's doing something really cool right now besides, like, the Make for COVID and that kind of stuff that so we should check out? we are – oh, God, don't kill me. I think it's called We Are Denver. So okay. it is Headroom Sessions, Act Black Actors Guild. Oh, yeah. Some other folks are all getting together to do some really amazing stuff. I was on Creative Mornings this morning, and Molina Speaks was the presenter, and he's involved in it. Cool. So that's on record. Like, that. yeah, it's amazing. Um, I have an entire list. Damn, I made an entire okay. list. Yeah, I made a list for my job. And I got laid oh, off, right. so I don't right. know if I have access to that list. But I have this oh, no. really great list of things that are happening. Rainbow Militia is getting ready to do an online circus. Um, yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah, there's some really fun stuff. Handsome Little Devils are working on – there are uh, some friends of ours that are um, amazing circus performers and vaudevilling performers, and they used to do this free live show the first Wednesday – of every month, maybe the second. Sorry, Cole. Um, but they would do this really amazing hour long live performance. And it was ma magic and singing and dancing. And oh, it was just so much fun. They did it at Alamo Draft House Denver. And since they can't oh, do that cool. anymore, they're doing it online. Um, I love that. Yeah, there's so many people are doing cool stuff. It's, it's hard mm -hmm. to keep track of it. But yeah, but there's plenty out there. there that is. We Are Denver thing. That looks really cool. I they, I, I saw something where they, I forgot to sign up, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's okay to forget. It's okay to forget stuff sometimes, you know, I yeah. know that, you know, the feeling of taking on a lot. Like mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah, I've had to learn a lot and, and I Googled a lot. I've watched so many videos on how to use this different software that I'm going to start implementing next week. But it took me three weeks to get to that point, yeah. you know, and I, I had to like, there's so much information available. Yeah. God, and even it. when I was filling out my like 
um, loan applications and grants and stuff, I like Googled, what does this word mean? <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm not a financial person. I don't know, but there's no shame in not knowing there's, there might be a problem with like, you have the answers. You just have to find them. That's, that's where it can get tricky, but yeah. But yeah, I thought that was really good advice, but yeah, we'll, we'll drop links to anything you want us to drop links to, including any of those people, um, that are like rainbow, Ra- yeah, I already forgot. <laughs> rainbow militia. <laughs> yeah. And like that kind of stuff for people yeah. to check out. We'll drop that in the, um, like description of all this stuff that cool. we'll post live. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I saw questions. I think everyone that's watching are like my best friends. Yeah, they know us. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of stuff gets streamed now on yeah. Friday nights, but yeah. um, people are going to be watching this later and listening and it's going to be really fun. So is there just like anything else you want us to know or about that you're working on before we say goodbye? No, those are the two big ones. The Denver yeah. Artist Relief dot org and make for covid dot co that's where i'm at right now and Yay. anybody got any tips and tricks on how to apply for unemployment that i didn't already put in my reference sheet that would be great um yeah oh yeah and instapot yeah, a lot of people who are instapot recipes i need instapot recipes because I can't, Ooh, can't go out instapot recipes can't go out anymore so i need to cook at <laughs> home oh man yeah i just thought like, you so started hearing a bunch of sirens it distracted me a little bit yeah, it's all right but well cool well thank you so much for doing with this with me i hope you had fun and you had a bunch of great advice for everything thank you so, and thank you for that i'm gonna just say thank you publicly i know hopefully it will get streamed and a lot more people will pay attention but when i did the art collective for my friend in california who had been assaulted and Spectra oh, yeah. Art Space stood, you know, stood up and said, hey, we'll help you with the shipping and the packaging. Mm. That was the most amazing thing. I think we sent her Aww, over 42 pieces of artwork. Like, she wow. still talks about it. So thank oh, you guys good. for doing that for us. Yeah, for her. I was happy to do it. It's yeah. like those little things where I'm like, I think I can help here. Yeah. The, you know, wherever we can. I, that It does help. Yeah. And yeah, I was happy to do it. So thank, thank you, you guys. Of course. Well, I hope you have a good night and make lots of art with your kids or hope we get to see some of their art sometime. Oh right? my gosh. They did an art auction with, uh, um, Jen Starling did an art auction. And so they both sold a piece on there. So yeah, it's, Oh, that's so cool. It's amazing. They feel so good. They're so good. My teenager stood up today and said, it's all right. You got laid off mom. Don't worry about my allowance. I'm going to open up my own online store and I'm going to start making my own money. Yes. And I'm like, yeah, are you going to pay rent? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, but they're going to make so their own amazing. money now. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if a, how old? 16 and 13. So if a 16 or 13 year old can do it, you can do it too. Seriously. Seriously. And we just got to wait till Annabelle's a little bit older and then they can start selling their, their other art. They're not quite old enough to sell some of their stuff that they draw. They, <laughs> she likes boobs and butts, you know, whatever. <laughs> Teenagers. <laughs> a little older then we'll see yeah 18 18 <laughs> you can start selling those things but yeah it's great yeah oh well i can't wait to see it um and yeah good timing yeah so i hope you have it. a good rest of your night and thank you thanks c and tanya and everybody kelly and everybody who came in to hang out with us we'll um we'll see you guys next week bye everybody all right thanks Sadie. bye thank you